Hello and welcome back to another episode of Create a Life You Love, the podcast. In today's episode, we're sitting down with Alex Wolf. Alex is an innovator who's changing the wellness scene with his unique approach using functional mushrooms. Alex is going to take us through his personal story, detailing how overcoming his own health challenges led him to discover the incredible benefits of mushrooms. It's a journey from struggling with his own health issues to finding natural solutions that not only helped himself heal, but also sparked this amazing business idea. He's going to share how he transitioned from being a pilot to entering the wellness field, creating these products that combine ancient wisdom of mushrooms with modern science. Alex's approach isn't just about healing the body. It's about creating a sustainable, healthy lifestyle. So join us as Alex opens up about the ups and downs of his journey, the breakthrough moments, and how he's now dedicating his life to helping others find their path to a better health. Now, this episode is a gentle reminder of the powerful, simple ways we can better our lives and the profound impacts of functional mushrooms in everyday health. Feeling curious? Well, tune in now to hear Alex's inspiring story and maybe discover something that could change your life too. So sit back, relax, and here's my conversation with Alex Wolf. Well, lots of travel. Um, finally back here in Austin where I, where I live, and uh, it's been good to be back here now for the past little while. Uh, I was in Mexico last week helping my girlfriend move. She made the move to Austin, so no longer doing the long distance thing, which feels really good. And uh, yeah, just expanding the business and getting everything going with that as well. So it's, it's been it's been a lot, but it's been good, man, and enjoying the process and, and everything that, that comes with it. Okay, yeah, because you were living in uh, Florida. No, no, you were living in Sa- Saskatchewan? Yeah, Saskatoon. I was living on a ranch in Saskatoon for a little That's while and, and then had the calling to, to come to Austin. And this felt like the right place to set up shop and headquarters for eons. and. It's been great. So really happy with the move. And it's funny, like I, if it was up to me, I would just stay here in Austin all the time, but I, um, I have to travel often. So it's just been, it's been a lot of travel, but it's part of it. You know, I, I get to do it and I get to go to these places and, and represent. So it's, it's cool. Okay. Yeah. I've heard good things about Austin. A lot of people seem to re excuse me, seem to uh, relocate there. It must have a really good community. Really good community, man. Really good people. And even as I travel, I realize like there's really, there's no place like it based on community. Like there's such good people here, a lot of movers and shakers, a lot of people doing really cool things, a lot of conscious people that are, you know, doing big things as well. So it's, it's fun to be around these kind of people. And yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's interesting. I never thought I would live in Texas, but, but here I am. It's, it's great. Yeah. Well, I never thought I would live in the countryside and here i am so (laughs) sometimes life works out the way it's it's supposed to um so so you're you're doing eons now i I know you just kind of touched on it you said you're you got to travel a lot for your business maybe you could just share a little bit about kind of what you're up to on the business front yeah so eons is uh as you know it's a biotech uh, mushroom brand um we combine really disruptive biotechnology and harness the power of mushrooms and put them together really you know charging up nature and technology to create really effective products and protocols on how to use these products to help transform people's lives and um it's functional mushrooms but it's it's paving the way for nice i love it that's awesome (laughs) i love it i love the product placement and uh yeah, it's uh, it's it's functional mushrooms, as you know, but we're we're helping pave the way for uh, microdosing um, responsibly, you know. So we we plan on doing some uh, legal microdosing stuff in the near future. So just maybe you can explain a little bit of the science behind it. Because when you say microdosing, are the mushrooms that are in these products similar to what you would find in something that you would be microdosing? Yes and no. So um, we don't use anything that's psychoactive right now in eons. It's all functional mushrooms. It's all legal. It's all mushrooms that you can buy, um, you know, anywhere, really. Uh, But we stack these mushrooms with 
other supplements and nutraceuticals and other nutrients, vitamins and minerals, making them very effective formulas. And because mushrooms are adaptogenic, they enhance all these other nutrients as well. So they, they work as adaptogens in your body and they help trans, uh, transport these nutrients throughout your body in the places that need it most. And a microdose, the way that I, the way that I use microdosing is I stack them with other formulas as well. So they, cause, because they're adaptogenic and that's what we'll do with microdosing. Uh, we won't use psilocybin. So typically right now, microdosing is with psilocybin. Psilocybin is uh, not legal, but we, what we plan on doing is, is using another mushroom that does have psychoactive capabilities in a very, very, very small microdose um, stacked with these other formulas as well. And that's something that nobody's doing and nobody's really done before. Um, so we're in the process of, of creating those products and protocols for those products. Okay, so it's it's a different mushroom that's not uh, doesn't have psilocybin, but it still has the psychoactive properties. Correct. It doesn't act. Correct. It doesn't work like psilocybin. It's a very different technology. However, it does have psych psychedelic capabilities. Um, and yeah, without giving too much away, um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's been around for a really long time. This mushroom. It has ancient. Uh, ancient history to this mushroom it's been around for a very very long time and it's been used in all sorts of ancient religions and ancient texts as well and graciously and luckily for us it's not <clears throat> excuse me it's not illegal it's not scheduled so we plan on on harnessing that mushroom and, and combining it with these other formulas to make something that's that's really effective in um in really just helping people calm down um, it's really going to be a calming formula and it gives them a sort of flow state where they're able to tap inwards and explore their daydreams and then help manifest them. So that's, that's the protocol that we're creating around it. Okay. Now that sounds interesting. Cause like the ones I have here are also for calm and focus. And I wonder like when you take these products or, or maybe it's different for the one you're describing is it something that you like have to like sit with, set an intention with and like go through a meditative practice or is it something you just kind of pop and then you just go off on your day? It could be both. You know, it, I, I personally, I am a big believer in intention. You know, I believe where you focus your energy and your attention, um, things will manifest, you know, energy flows where focus goes. So if you're taking the time to create a space and, and, create an intention for yourself. I believe this is a way to sort of hack the matrix. You know, this is a way that your identity can move forward by doing these things. However, I've been challenged by people that I work with that, um, you know, intention is something created by the identity. So, and your soul and your identity can be on totally different pages, you know? So um, this is something that I'm, I'm playing with. So I, I believe, yes, you can use an intention. This is what personally I like to do is I like to write an intention, do it. And I find it has wonderful possibilities with this, you know, and it usually does come through with my intention. However, what I'm being taught by some very wise people is that your soul, you know, your, and this gets a little deeper and philosophical, but your soul has come here for whatever it came here for. And it could be something very different than what, you know, Alex Wolf has in mind or what, what Jer has in mind. And whatever you do, your soul is going to, is going to find a way to achieve this. And um, either way, you know, whether you use an intention or not with these products, they do work. They have a, you know, they've been, uh, they've been, these formulas have been created to create a validation experience um, with the biotechnology, with the formula, so that they, they absorb in your system and they create a, a pattern interrupt. So it will change your state. And then with a, a state change, it's, it's your opportunity to create a new pathway in your mind. And the more that you choose to use this new pathway, then it becomes, you know, a habit and it becomes part of your personality and your personality becomes your personal reality. So it's, uh, it's really just a little tool to help give you a small adjustment. You know, I like to, I like to make or help use people create small adjustments in their life. And then over time, that small adjustment can bring them on a completely different trajectory as opposed to 
you know, giving them a major dose of something and then trying to like give them a 180 in their life. It's like, no, just like small adjustments at a time. Right. Yeah, that's perfect. Okay, so let, let's backtrack now because I want to understand more about how you got here. And when I first connected with you, I think it would be a few years ago, uh, we were both in the same elemental, uh, the men's group. And at yes. the time, you were just, I believe, and obviously correct me if I'm wrong about anything here, but I believe you were, um, you weren't, you were no longer a pilot. You were coming out of that career. You used to be a pilot. I think you were dabbling in uh, CBD business, maybe. Um, we were exploring some options and you were kind of actually not sure fully where you wanted to go. Is that kind of correct as far as the timeline goes? And, and maybe you can talk a little bit about just like, you know, how you got to where you're at now. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. Um, I was a pilot for a long time. I was a you know, commercial pilot, corporate pilot towards the end of my career, flying private jets for wealthy people and companies and this kind of stuff. And it was through that career that uh, it led me to partner with, um, you know, some some prosperous people, and we created a couple companies together. And one of them was a, a CBD business uh, called Shop CBD. And in that business, while I was, I, I launched it out of California, Los Angeles, California. And while we were launching it, um, you know, I was a startup mode. I was managing a team. I was under a lot of stress, and I started to, for the first time in my life, get major anxiety and brain fog and fatigue and I was really like crashing and burning you know and that's not a term that a, a pilot likes to use but it, it was true and uh, it wasn't until one day I got a call from a shareholder in the business and he was checking in on on the company and how I was doing and I just took the opportunity to tell him the truth and I said man you know I'm, I'm doing all these things I'm working out I'm eating I'm eating clean and meditating but I still have this anxiety and this brain fog. And he said, you know, three words to me that, that changed my trajectory he said, heal your gut. And I said, tell me more. And he said, look, I've been studying the gut biome for 20 years. And if you could come to understand the science of the relationship between your gut biome, the sun, your brain, fungi, um, and beyond, you will upgrade your relationship to nature and you will shift from a consumer to a co-creator in this world. And that line just really blew me away. And I was like, wow. And he's like, yeah, you should really start studying the gut biome and how, you know, mushrooms and the circadian rhythm play a, play a part in this. Like it's all connected. So I started doing some research. I watched the movie Fantastic Fungi by Paul Stamets and it really inspired me. And I was like, man, these, these mushrooms have been around for eons, you know, literally 700 million plus years. They're the oldest, the oldest technology on the planet and the biggest technology on the planet with their mycelial network. And they play a huge impact, not only on the ecosystems, but on our internal ecosystems of our, our gut biome. So I started a, a functional mushroom protocol and I started taking reishi, uh, reishi mushroom for my sleep, cordyceps mushroom for energy, lion's mane mushroom for cognitive function, uh, turkey tail and shaga for my gut. And I combine this with breath work and I combine this with cold therapy. And literally within like 10 days, I was feeling better than I'd ever felt before. And my brain fog was gone. My anxiety was gone. And I had this whole new perspective on, you know, just living your life, paying attention to your gut health, which I found out is 80% is of your immune system is in your gut. And you know, paying more attention to the sun, you know, waking up at sunrise, eating when the sun is at the highest and all this kind of stuff that it, it said to do in this circadian rhythm. And uh, I just became like a new version of myself. And uh, that was around the time that we met. And I was very inspired by mushrooms and cold therapy and breath work and all this kind of stuff through elemental. And I was like, wow, this is a perfect fit. And I was looking for something that I could do entrepreneurial wise that can make more of an impact than CBD. And that's when I was like, okay, let's do functional mushrooms. I believe this could really impact everybody's life. Um, but let's make them very bioavailable because something I learned in my CBD days was that CBD is not very bioavailable, meaning it's a great medicine, but it, it's very challenging for the body to absorb it and, and use it in, the, in its properties. So we went out and acquired uh, 14 patents around bioavailability and um, started circadian wellness and then started eons as the mushroom brand to bring 
um, you know, to bring mushrooms to the world. Okay. I mean, that was really well said. You explained it well. Um, I, I would like to learn more about just this whole idea of the brain fog and the anxiety. And, and you know, you talked about breath work, cold exposure, and the mushrooms. Was it a trivecta? Like, was it all three of those things coming together that really healed you? Or was it the mushrooms that was the real catalyst? Or can you even identify which one, you know, was the real catalyst? For me, it felt like started taking the mushrooms that something just activated within me, you know, and it gave me. How are you, you know, sorry, how are you taking them? Like when you, um, there's four different kinds, I believe, where you just grinding them up. Like how are they kind of. So we, I started taking them in tincture form. I, I discovered through research that by keeping the molecules wet, um, they're more effective. And that's what, so that leads me into how we do things at circadian wellness and eons, but I'll come back to that. Okay. Uh, I want to answer, I want to answer your question. So I was taking the molecules wet in a tincture form. Um, but then shortly after I, I realized I most tinctures are alcohol based and I didn't want to be taking alcohol based tinctures, which really inspired me to make new ways how to take these mushrooms, you know? So that's why we went out and got these desiccated liposomal technologies so we could keep molecules wet, even in a powder form, even in a tablet, even in a, in a gummy and this kind of stuff. So that was really where the innovative side of me really came in. But it, the mushrooms were the first part of it. It was the first catalyst because I started sleeping well. I started, I started getting more energy in the morning, you know, to get through that, those, those crashes. I started having the cognitive function again, feeling sharp and not feeling the brain fog and, uh, or the fatigue. And, and then that gave me the energy to like, okay, let me, you know, maybe gave me the courage to go and do some cold therapy or it gave me the, the, you know, the courage to want to go and try something else like breath work. And, and, you know, so I was, then I just started stacking these things and I was like, wow, all the answers are really within me. You know, these, these adaptogenic mushrooms are working super well with my body. And, um, I believe we were designed to use these, these answers from nature, you know, and, and like I said, mushrooms are Forever. So I, I just I felt like they were really harmonious with uh, with our natural rhythms. Okay, because I'm definitely intrigued. Like I'm on the other side where I, I've been doing cold exposure and I've been doing breath work, but I have no real experience with um, with functional mushrooms. You know, uh, well now I'm utilizing the Young's products, but besides that, I, I have no experience, and I didn't realize there was such a connection to our gut, and our gut was such a connection to kind of how we're feeling. Um, and how we're showing up. And, and I can definitely attest to sometimes having that brain fog and wishing that I was sharper at moments and stuff. So it's something, um, yeah, I think I'll definitely, I'll look into it further. I mean, so so I'm just curious again, how are you, um, like, how are, how are you getting these uh, tinctures at the time? Like, was something you were just creating on your own? Is it something you can just purchase online? Or did you have to, again, create them on your own? Yeah, I found, I did some research and I found a family that was that was in the mushroom space for a long time. The the, the owner of that business, it was called Family Fungi. Um, oh, okay. he, he he was a mycologist for a long time, and he really knew what he was talking about. And we got these tinctures from him, and really noticed the difference right away. And then the way that my mind works, chair is just always like, how can I make this better? You know, how can I bring this to the masses? How can I make this really? appealing how can i make a brand that really resonates and and just that's all that's always what i'm trying to do is is create uh be innovative with stuff that's just my entrepreneurial way but that's how it started was with tinctures but then i realized i don't want to be taking alcohol-based tinctures um so that led me to go and start something else um but what i learned along the way with mushrooms to, to give a little bit of science you know i don't have a science background or anything but what i learned is mushrooms are very rich in these things called polysaturides and polysaturides play are very biologically valuable they have um you know a tremendous impact on our gut they they are anti-inflammatory they're anti-hypertensive they're anti-cancerous um they're anti-aging you know they improve our digestion they improve our cognitive function um they're yeah they're they improve your longevity so they not only do they enhance all this the good stuff they cancel out a lot of this bad stuff that we're exposed to in our you know daily life and um, they're just a, a great natural 
tool, like a natural technology that we could tap into to really just give us a bit of an edge with all these things that we're, we're going, you know, against in the matrix with EMF and all this other stuff that I find plays a factor on our, on our, on our psyche in that. No, I see. So are, are these um, like in the product like this, is it, is that stuff that you're talking about? Is will you find that, you know, within here, or is this more dialed into something more specific, like calm and focus? Yeah. So all these formulas are, they do have mushrooms in there. They do have the functional mushrooms in there stacked with all these other adaptogens and vitamins and minerals. So they work synergistically together um, to, to have even more of an effect. Um, that's the cool thing about adaptogens is they, they work together and they help transport the molecules. Um, but yeah, they, there is lion's mane mushroom in there. That's for the, the cognitive right. function. And okay. uh, yes. Also, lion's mane is a mushroom. Yeah. Oh, I wasn't aware of that. I see. I, I thought it was something different. So lion's mane mushroom. I see. Okay. Yes. Oh, now it's all making sense. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Amazing. Okay. So, and then you, you, so then you developed uh, eons, which you said is a um, brand under, don't tell me under circadian wellness. So, you got it. so is circadian wellness, I guess the parent company. Circadian wellness is the parent company. Exactly. It was a, a vehicle that we created that can combine biotechnology and combine it with, you know, really cool branding uh, to create brands in, in different areas of the wellness sector. And mushrooms was just something that we were super passionate about. Of course, we, are, we're, we still are. And that was the first one that we brought to market. Um, you know, we have plans for other brands in the wellness sector, but for now, it's all focused on, on eons. Okay. So I, I imagine like growing up, like, you know, you probably never were like sitting at home and you're like, yep, yeah, when I'm older, I'm going to create a mushroom based company that's going to like help all these people and serve this. Maybe you, maybe you wanted to be a pilot when you were a kid. I don't know. But like looking back on it all, um, your trajectory is kind of like, you know, it's a little random. If, if, if you know. <laughs> yeah. 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 Can you talk a little bit just about like before, like even you were a pilot and stuff, like I'm curious about like your kind of trajectory and your transformation. Cause I know you, you've done a lot of work on yourself and I know you've worked with plant medicine as well. And like, yeah. So I'm just curious a little bit about that as far as like, you know, what your journey was like prior to all this stuff. Yeah. Thanks for asking. So yeah, the piloting really played a big factor, you know, and, and I, it wasn't that I wanted to be a pilot as a kid. I always thought airplanes were cool, but I had a big, I had a big fear of heights as a kid, actually, you know, I was really scared of heights. Um, I don't know what happened, but I was maybe something as a kid and I had this fear. I wouldn't go on roller coasters. I wouldn't want to go on balconies or any of this stuff. And it was, it was, it kind of sucked, you know, but uh, thank God for my parents. When I was 17 years old, they, they sort of tricked me. They cleverly tricked me into bringing me to the airport and they signed me up for a, a flying lesson. And before they brought me to this small airport in Ontario and uh, I, they're like, Oh, you know, and before, you know, we're walking out onto the tarmac and we're checking out an airplane with an instructor. And then he's like, Oh, hop in. And I hop in the airplane. And then, you know, next thing you know, we're, we're starting to taxi out and it's, it's a whole thing. And I'm like, wow, this is, this is pretty wild. And then, he starts taking off on the airplane and I'm like, I'm kind of freaking out inside. Um, and then within seconds, he says to me, you have control. And, and I, and I, I was like, like are these signals for me to take control of the airplane. And I have, and then he says, say that you have control. And I'm like, I have control. And so now I'm, I'm flying the airplane, you know, my hands are on the yoke and I'm like, Oh my God, this is wild. And it was in those moments that my fear kind of just, it disintegrated. I really had no choice but to like take control of the airplane. And now I'm flying the airplane. And whether it was true or not, the instructor says to me, he's like, wow, you're really a natural at this, you know? And now my confidence is, is, is engaged. And I'm like, wow, this is pretty awesome. And, and, you know, we go through the whole flight, he ends up doing the landing, but it was, it was so much fun. And I was just, I was astonished after, you know, cause I'd spent all my life in fear and then I'm just like, wow, all this time I, I'd been living my life in fear. And it was really just an illusion. You know, it was something that I had a belief that was not really true, you know? So that was a big, big 
thing for me. That's really where my life took a totally different trajectory. And I realized that fear is, is an illusion. It's something that's based on our beliefs. And I spent the next, you know, I, I got really into aviation. I started flying. I, I became, I got my private pilot's license that year. I was a pilot, a private pilot at 18 years old. I became a commercial pilot at 20 years old. And I, I just became, I spent every day at the airport. I became obsessed and I spent the next, you know, 10, 12 years of my life, pretty much fearless because I, I had overcome my fear. And anytime anybody spoke to me about fear, I was just like, ah, oh, it's really, it's an illusion, you know, I, based on that experience. So I really pushed the limits in my next 12 years. And I, I really, I just really went full throttle. And uh, it, you know, that, that aviation career really opened up a lot of doors for me. I started flying private jets and I started flying for you know, wealthy individuals. And then I got exposed to that world of entrepreneurship and business and companies and all this kind of stuff. And that's where, um, you know, that's where my entrepreneurial mind started getting developed and wanted to, you know, and then it led to pushing the limits even more and going down to experiment with plant medicines in South America. And uh, that's really where another trajectory was open because I got to just push past more limits down there and got to, to realize what it was like to, to really be in my heart and uh, became a lot more heart centered. And I was like, wow, I really want to bring plant medicines to the world. Um, how can I do that? Yeah, it was awesome. And I was like, how can I do that? Well, I saw an opportunity with plant medicine in cannabis, you know, cannabis was becoming legal at the time in Canada. And I was, I had a good relationship with cannabis. Um, you know, my mom, at one point, her, my mom and her sister both were diagnosed with uh, early stage breast cancer. And I convinced my mom not to do chemotherapy, but to do cannabis oil as treatment instead. And, um, you know, she ended up, she ended up uh, sur like surviving and, and beating the cancer and all that kind of stuff. And it was, it was incredible. And- Wait, uh, wait, wait, wait. wait. So you convinced your mom, which is incredible, not to do chemo, which I think is a huge feat in itself. Were you at that moment, like, did you feel any type of pressure on you? Like, what if this doesn't work out? You know, I was just so confident. I'd seen it work for several people before. You know, there's this thing called. Was, sorry, was it specifically with breast, with breast cancer or was it just in general you saw it working before? It was, it was specifically with cancer, you know, I'd seen, and, and this is a bold statement, you know, sorry, you said she had, sorry, sorry. You said she had breast cancer. Yeah, she, my mom had uh, rheumatoid arthritis and the medication that she was taking for rheumatoid arthritis was starting early stages of breast cancer. And okay. uh, her sister had breast cancer at the same time. And, you know, sadly, her sister decided to go with chemotherapy and uh, didn't make it, you know, and, and my mom, uh, she passed away. Oh, and my man. mom, yeah, my mom, you know, went, I convinced her, I was like, Mom, you got nothing to lose, just try this cannabis oil, I've seen it work, you know, I gave her a whole speech. And um, we made an agreement, you know, we made this very, uh, we made an agreement, she would do the, the cannabis oil, and I would stop eating meat. <laughs> that was the because she didn't believe I would stop eating meat. I was such a meat eater. And she said, Well, I'm gonna go plant based. And I was like, well, if you go, if you do the cannabis, I'll go plant-based, you know, that was the deal that we made. And uh, she's like, you'll never go plant-based. I go, I'll do it. I'll do it if you do it, you know? So we oh, made that agreement. That's amazing, Alex. That's so yeah. cool. Yeah. It was cool. It was an, it was an experience and uh, it worked. And um, because of that, my mom became a big supporter of what I was doing with cannabis and all this kind of stuff. Cause she was never, you know, in all honesty, she was never a supporter. She was always looked at it as a, a recreational drug and all this kind of stuff and then it, it totally changed her tune and that really was inspirational for me to start the cannabis company because i knew it had tremendous medic uh like medicinal properties it's just most people don't use it for that and myself included for a long time i didn't use it for that you know but um i do believe it has its place in the world uh when used with intention or or used responsibly it could be a wonderful medicine so yeah that was my uh that was my experience, like how it all started. And uh, I wanted to bring plant medicines to the world. Cannabis was the, 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 the medicine that I saw that had an opportunity to do it legally. And I did that. And I ended up uh, co-founding and launching what became one of the biggest cannabis companies in the, in the world. 
um, has over 200 employees today and it sells thousands and thousands of kilograms all over Canada. And um, that was a great, that was a great launch into my business career. And then from there, I started the, the shop CBD. Um, and then that company got acquired. And then it led me into, okay, well, how, how else can I impact the world? And I saw and felt that mushrooms were something that could really impact everybody. Uh, it doesn't have to be a psychedelic mushroom. Functional mushrooms can play a whole part in your daily life and circadian rhythm. And um, yeah, that's what inspired circadian wellness. Oh, amazing story. Um, I didn't know that about you, a lot of that stuff, actually, actually, but I think it's really cool the way you made that agreement um, with your mother, and I'm happy to hear that it worked and that she's a survivor. Uh, are, you, are you still plant-based is the question. I'm not plant-based anymore, so that's, that's where it gets a little, you know, controversial for some people, but I did the plant-based thing for like oh. five years, you know, and it, yeah. Yeah, I think it's fine. No, I don't think it should be controversial. I'm sure your mom is okay with it. She survived. Like, she must be so proud of you. Mom's proud. Yeah, thank you, Jerry. She's proud of me. You know, we're in a, we're in a great relationship. Um, she's healthy today. She's healthier than ever. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> yeah, no, it, it's truly a blessing. And the plant-based thing did its thing. It really cleared me out. Um, it lightened me up a lot, you know. And then uh, it just got to a place where I felt I needed... Um, more protein and more fats and and i just i got back on eating meat and i feel great now but you I know what go ahead I, i'm plant-based right and i've been uh, fully plant-based i think seven seven years since my son was born i was vegetarian probably a few years before that and so i have a lot of these conversations and stuff and it seems to happen like people are vegetarian or they're vegan plant-based whatever and then they just I don't know, all of a sudden they feel like this calling to go back and have meat back in their diet. I personally haven't had that calling yet. Um, it does pop in here and there, but I always find it interesting talking to people that were once, um, you know, plant-based and then they go back to meat. So it's kind of cool. I didn't know that about you. So it's kind of interesting to me that you went down that path as well. And it's good. I think it's good. Like, why not try all, you know, walks of life, see how it resonates with you and your body and see what feels good. Um, so, okay, so I want to ask a couple of questions here, because one thing I thought was really interesting was the whole thing, how such a young age you identified this relationship with fear and that it was all just around your beliefs. So I'm wondering, like, did how did that lesson, you know, um, help you in the, rest, in, in the following years and these other endeavors you're doing? Do you feel like it really kind of set you up with success to become an entrepreneur and start these businesses, especially with cannabis? Because at the time, it, it was probably not as, uh, well received as it is now yeah you, you, you're totally right and thank you for asking that it really did just send me in this trajectory of going all in you know not having fear not having i had very little doubts you know very little self-doubt which is i just want to put out there too which is not like it's usually on the other side most people are, are really uh, on the other side of fear fear is a big dictator for how they show up in their life so that's why I brought it up because at such a young age, the fact that you identified that, I think, is amazing. Well, thanks. It, it was really, it was really because I spent so much of my youth having that fear. So I knew it was on one side of it. And then by seeing on the other side of it that it was like, wow, I could literally fly airplanes when I, I thought that would be the scariest thing in the world, and then become really good at it. It was like, wow, it's it it really was just like an like epiphany that it's only myself that was holding me back, you know? And so, and then that's where I got to experiment with this, with a lot of stuff and cold therapy was one of them. I never liked the cold, you know, and I'm, I'm, yeah. you could probably relate, you know, I, I know you're a big, big ice bath guy yourself. And like, I still, I, it's still yeah. Colleges, yeah. same here. I, I, I do it every day and every day before I get in, I, there's a few seconds where I'm like, ah, uh, you know, and I'm like, really got to push past that feeling of uncomfortability or fear or that voice in my head that just doesn't want to do it. But I, I've gotten really familiar with that voice and realizing that, you know, that voice is not always there to, to, to serve me. It's really there to like kind of protect me and protection is a form of love. So I, I get it. But it, for me, Jer, it's really just all about pushing past that resistance. And I know now that all resistance is in the mind. 
And um, so that's another thing that plant medicines and mushroom have helped me is just get more in my body and bringing my attention from my mind into my body. Mm. And, um, and you, I know you're, you could relate to this. And by doing so, it gives you that opportunity or it gives me the opportunity to just push past the fear, you know, and I would, I would encourage anybody listening to, to just try that, you know, like anybody can take your attention and put it into your hand, you know, and you could, you can consciously feel your hand and feel what it's like to have your energy in your hand. And if you start practicing that with your breath, and then you start bringing your attention into your body, you'll see the chatter starts to go away in your mind. And then it just gives this space where you can, you know, start to move forward in the world more from your body and embody that. And it's a practice, you know, and I'm not a, I'm not an expert at it. That's for sure. But it, it's just these little tricks and, and tips that have helped me um, navigate past the, the doubts and the, and the limitations. Yeah, I, I can definitely agree, um, especially on the breathwork side of stuff. The breath is a powerful tool that you can definitely utilize to just to calm your nervous system for one, but two, to definitely get out of your head into your body and just give yourself an opportunity to release all that stuff that's kind of stored up in there. So are, are you are you still practicing breath work? I know we also took the facilitator uh, elemental rhythm facilitator training together and stuff. I'm just curious, are, are you still working with breath work and are you facilitating? Are you doing anything? I, I still practice the breath work, not as often as I should. You know, I, I, I was in a really good flow of doing it every day. Um, I should bring it back into my practice. I do love it. Um, I'd say I do like a, a facilitated breath work thing a couple times a month. Uh, okay. There's a lot of breath workers here in Austin. I'm so you know fortunate. So there's always some sort of breath work facilitation going on i've done some amazing ones i've had like some major major breakthroughs in breath work i love it it's something i strongly recommend to anybody anybody can do it it's such a wonderful biohack and yeah, yeah you know it and uh but yeah not a, i don't do it as much as i should but i do do the cold therapy every day um okay. and i do breath work in the cold therapy so that's kind of how i i kill two birds with one stone okay. um but it's, it's really just, um, you know, I'll do the four, four, four breathing in the, in the, the ice bath okay. um, to get to, to get to two and a half minutes. And then that's usually like, I'm, I'm so charged after that, but yes. I, I appreciate the reminder that it's something that I should do more of, you know, I should. Yeah. I, I mean, yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to make you come down on yourself or be hard on yourself. Cause one thing that I've identified too, is like, even with the ice baths, I was trying to be like committed doing it every day. And I, I hit like 77 days. I was trying to hit 100. And I got like a chest cold. And I was able to push through like other types of colds that I had along the way. But the chest cold, I wasn't able to because it was like mm. in the chest. And when you go in, it was just it was just activating it. But I realized I was just being so hard on myself. And then I, I couldn't miss a day. So now my approach is like, so maybe you don't do it every day. But maybe you do it once, twice, three times a week. It's still okay. You, just, you still have that consistency and you're still allowing yourself to work through whatever you're working through. So I don't think it's necessary to, to you know, keep ourselves committed to doing it every day. I think just checking back in with yourself when it's necessary and using the tools is where it really, really comes in, uh, comes in handy. So and that brings me to kind of my next question is like, you know, you've done a lot of inner work on yourself. That's definitely uh, obvious. And I know you've worked with plant medicine, breath work, mushrooms, right? Cold exposure and stuff. Like how, how important do you think that inner work has been to, to your life and to your journey? Oh, wow. It's everything. It's literally everything. And it's, that's the work. That's like energy precedes matter, you know? So my energy will always show up based on how much work I do on myself, you know, but the thing that you just brought up that I want to, you know, really echo is a big part of the inner work is just the self-talk, you know, like the self-talk to ourself is, is so critical because it's so important. It's so valuable because that self-talk can, can do so much good or so much negative, you know, it, it's really like, it's our own, my mind can be, my worst enemy, you know, I really can. So it's like, <laughs> go ahead. No, sorry, I got to want to jump in here because I don't know if you remember this, but I, I sure as hell do. And this was during the, I don't know if it was during the breathwork facilitation or the men's group, but I remember you sharing a story about how you gave, um, I think you gave your 
a voice in your head, a name or a persona, right? And it was like your higher power and you were able, and again, you can correct me on this, but I think you, you would utilize it when that negative voice was coming in, you would call upon it or something, right? And I'm just bringing it up because you just reminded me as you were saying that, um, yeah. what, what was that? It was, am I correct in the sense that you gave it a name? And Yeah, so I, I've given them all a name, you know, and this may sound okay. a bit funny, but it, it was just that it's just a trick and a tip that I would recommend to people if they're open to playing with it is, you know, we get these, we get these identities, you know, we get these um, alter egos or, you know, voices in our head and everybody has them and they can be, they can be very helpful, you know, at times in our life. And then there's times where they could like, you know, the time when I don't want to get in the ice bath and they're just like, ah, just, you know, don't do the ice bath, you know, and then this and this. And so I've, I've just gotten familiar with them to the point where I'll, I'll name them and I'll give them like a character name that's kind of funny. So it, it takes the seriousness off it, you know? And, you know, for instance, one of them that I have is, I call him Speedy Gonzalez because he just wants to do everything really, really fast, you know? And like, it's like hyperactivity. And I, I've come to learn, like, sometimes that's good. You know, it's good to be productive. It's good to get things done. But as I, as I get older, it's like, I, I'm really trying to slow things down now. Like, you know, when I'm, when I'm writing things out, I write it very slow and clear instead of scrambled and messy, you know, and, and when I'm driving, I drive slow. I just want to get there. Yeah. I, I drive slow and I just want to get there safely. Like there's no rush, you know? So, yeah. but when that voice comes in my head where it's like hyperactivity, I just like, okay, speedy Gonzalez, just slow down, you know? And I acknowledge him. That's the first step is I acknowledge the voice. And I thank him for all the things that he's done in my life. You know, he's helped me get to where I am. Great. But you don't need, he doesn't need to be the driver anymore. I don't need him to drive me around. I just want to get where I'm going safely. So I say, it's okay, Speedy. You could just sit in the passenger seat and, you know, I'm going to allow my higher self or my, you know, super conscious mind or whatever to, to be in control. And I find just by acknowledging it, giving that voice gratitude, then it's not, it's not acting in the shadows, you know, and it's not, it's not uh, trying to do something and, and come back into my life with a vengeance. And I have this with a few different identities. Judge Dredd is another one that I've identified. That's very judgmental on myself and very. Okay. Hard on myself. Yeah. Now that was the one that I struggled with the biggest amount. Cause I, I had a very um, judgmental uh, self-talk for a long time, you know, that really, pounded it into me like okay you got to be better you got to be better and what i learned was that judgment is judgment is like the killer of your imagination you know and your imagination is so powerful your imagination is your subconscious mind it's where your heart is it's where all the magic happens and, and judgment is just such a it's not it's not a good frequency to be in you know but I get it that my my Judge Dredd character probably used a lot of discernment in my life as well and kept me away from certain individuals or kept me out of trouble at times. So I thank him for done, but I, I just tell him that he could stay in the back seat and just, just observe these days, you know? So that's just an exercise that I've done. It may sound strange, but it's really helped me um, not let those voices in my head, not, let those identities take over and um, bring me down a, a path that uh, doesn't serve me anymore. Okay, so again, amazing, man. Your, your journey is, is really incredible. Um, and like, so I, I want to understand better of how you got to the state of awareness, because obviously you're super aware, you're aware of all these voices and these different kind of alter egos, as you say. And one of the things that is really cool, the fact that you're thanking these voices that are coming up, because you recognize that um, they were there for you and they've helped you through the good times and the bad. So you're grateful for them, which is, you know, a very high level of consciousness when you can find gratitude in the good and the bad. So what, what, what tools like, cause not everyone is at that level, right? People maybe are just starting out, maybe they're halfway there, whatever, but what kind of tools and stuff were you utilizing, um, to get to this kind of state of awareness and especially to recognize that you do have all these different like alter egos. Right. It, thanks for asking that. And thanks, Jared. It's, it really took, it's a practice and it's still a daily practice, um, right. but it's really, it's really becoming the observer, you know, the observer of the mind is, is different from those identities, you know, the identities, 
the identities can be observed, you know? So it was really just a practice of, and this is where breath work really came in is being really mindful of my breath, you know, being breath, really work. Mindful. Breath, breath work, is, breath work right. is the tool. Yeah. And being present and then, you know, just being aware and, and really trying to slow down myself. You know, I, I went, I moved at a really high speed for a long time and, um, mistakes happen when you're moving so fast and it's like, okay, well, I don't want to repeat those mistakes again. So just slowing down. But I think it was really just being pay attention to my breath and uh, be, observing my thoughts and observing this and not, and realizing I'm not my thoughts, you know, they're just, right. they're, they're just there, you know, just like I'm not my emotions, but they're there and I can observe them. And uh, I don't have to fall into these loops and these patterns. I could, I could break them. I could okay. change. So breath work, obviously a big catalyst for you. Uh, I know the mushrooms and you do cold exposure. Uh, what about the plant medicine? Like, how was that integrated all, all of this? Did, did it help, as they say, show you who you've become? Did it help show you, like, you know, things that you thought maybe you resolved, but were still kind of within there? Big time, man. The plant medicine for me was was instrumental as well. And it's, it's I am an advocate for plant medicine, just really responsibly, you know, and I, I've had to learn the hard way that, you know, plant medicine is not a silver bullet. It's not, it doesn't just work for everybody. So it's really, it's really with responsibility and, and really meeting the medicine halfway and, you know, going slow, it, it bigger is not better. All these things like more is not better. Um, just, you know, better use of the medicine is better. So uh, I want to just be very careful on that. And, and you know, I, I, I am an advocate for mushrooms and, and for plant medicines and all this, but very responsibly, you know, like I, I was one, uh, someone that used it recreationally and then had to get very humbled by the medicine, you know, to show that, okay, this stuff is, this stuff is sacred. This stuff is, is very powerful. And uh, I'm, I am also powerful as a human being. We're also very powerful. We have amazing capabilities and technology in our body and uh, to learn how to meet the medicine halfway and what does that mean is, is really with, you know, giving attention to um, how we use it and very, you know, smaller doses and, and working our way up to a larger dose, a flood dose or a, a mega dose. Yes. Um, and, and just being very discerning on, on how and when we use these medicines. But, but to answer the question directly, yeah, these things caused, you know, major, major downloads of of wisdom that I had to integrate over time. You know, I would be get, get shown something or shown something um, very interesting about myself, very deep, very profound. And I'd have, and then my identity would try to really insert himself back into the, to the mix. Um, and I would see that, that my, that yeah. voice or that identity is trying to yeah. come back. So a lot of integrating, you know, it took a lot of time and, and energy. Yeah, no, I, I, I smile on that because I'm feeling that. And, um, you know, I, I share this a lot on this podcast, I guess, because it's still so fresh for me. But I had my first kind of like ayahuasca experience back in April. Wow. I did, yeah, so I did four ceremonies. Up wow. Arrhythmia. arrhythmia and um, I'm just looking at my paper here because I wrote down the word integrate. And, and I can't express how important the integration part of all of this is. Like people think like going and working with the medicine is the challenge. It's actually when you come back afterwards, because just like you, it's, as I come back, I'm integrated back into my life. And, you know, for the first week, maybe two or three weeks, I'm still riding that high from the medicine. You know, all these amazing things happen and stuff. But then I'm also slowly getting back integrated into my day to day. Right. And then I, and, and I don't know if it's my ego or whatever it is, but it's still connected to this old self. And yes. the more into my life the more i want to connect to that old self but that's where the integration comes in that's where these daily practices come in to make sure that we don't fall backwards that we continue to move forward with these new lessons and it's not so much about changing everything and i'm going to change my whole life what i had to learn was it was more about taking the lessons that i learned and applying them to what i have now and sure you may make some changes and your path may get altered a little bit but it, it really is, is about applying all that stuff to what is in front of you and for me, anyway, that was one of my biggest lessons. And I continue to work on that stuff every day through, like you said, breath work and cold exposure. And also, to be honest, connection and having, I think, these conversations and like 
you know, obviously we're on a podcast here, but outside of this, just connecting with a good community, connecting with the right people and not being afraid to have these open, vulnerable conversations because a lot of therapy, therapy can come out of just the conversation alone. So for me, that's another modality uh, that kind of works. So. Well said, I yeah. completely agree. Everything you just said, Jer, spot on. Beautiful. Um, okay. So let's kind of conclude here. Um, what's, what's, I'll ask you this. What, what's next for you? What's next for eons and circadian rhythm? Wait, that's not right. Circadian got, wellness. Circadian uh, wellness. So yeah, I know you touched on it before, but I think it's a good way to kind of end. Like what's next for, for you and, and your businesses. And then you can also talk a little bit about if people are interested in learning more about, um, you know, yourself and, and the brands, uh, how can they find you? Perfect. Thanks, Jared. Yeah. So eons is, um, eons is my baby. Um, we bunch of really cool, innovative, effective products and protocols coming out over the next few months. So I'm really excited for that. The, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, the smart gummies and the smart coffee were really just how to introduce the brand to people. Um, I wanted to get, you know, them out to the masses as much as possible. And I was like, well, how can I do that? Well, you know, two thirds of North America drinks coffee and let me give them a smarter way to drink coffee. So we gave them a a smarter way with no caffeine crash, with no jitters, with no anxiety, but still gives them the energy and the focus and the clarity and, and all that with 15 different adaptogens and nutrients and all this. Can can I ask um, mushrooms and all this cool stuff? Sorry. um, I just want to ask a question about that. How does it, how does it compare to something like, um, like cacao? Yeah, cacao is awesome. I love cacao and we're going to do a cacao formula. I would say, yeah, yeah, we're going to do a cacao formula because I love cacao. Cacao brings you very much in your heart. Yeah, um, to what you were describing, that's why I popped in and why I asked. Yeah, it 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 kind of is. It it, the the smart mushroom formula brings you very much in your body as well. Not as much as cacao, but the adaptogens in there, the shaga mushroom, very good for your gut brings you into your body. It's almost like taking a microdose in itself. The coffee formula is very much, is very, very much like taking a microdose. It's very activating. Uh, It's very energetic. Does it taste 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 great? It's coffee. It is coffee. It's, um, it's premium Colombian espresso. It's mold free. We've had it triple, triple tested for mold because there's lots of mold in coffee these days. Um, So we wanted to do a mold free coffee. Um, but we've also put in these different, um, nutrients and nutraceuticals to counter effect all the negative effects of caffeine. So there's no caffeine crash. There's no jitters. There's no anxiety. Uh, it's just steady energy all day. And that's how I wanted to introduce the brand. So people would be like, wow, this is a, this is a cool new way to drink coffee. What else do these guys do? And I wanted to help people sleep better. So we did the sleep gummies, okay. uh, the common focus as a pattern interrupt. Uh, we have a hydration product coming out um, using some very advanced electrolytes mixed with mycelium uh, to really enhance your hydration. And, and uh, so that's very exciting for me. I, I love, you know, water and being hydrated and all that kind of stuff. Um, we also have a really advanced sleep formula coming out with our biotechnology. That's going to, uh, it's going to transport these molecules right into your bloodstream within seconds. So you'll be passed out into REM sleep within minutes, which is phenomenal. Um, There's a lucid dream formula in there as well. So it's going to enhance lucid dreaming. So there's many different products coming out. Um, That's that's what really excites me is is taking and innovating new products to the market. And then um, besides that, I'm happy to share this on on your podcast, Jer, is we have a, and I alluded to it earlier a little bit, we have a legal microdosing line coming out uh it's called codes by eons and that's uh it's going to be legal microdosing psychedelics and um yeah there's like i alluded to earlier there's a mushroom in there that's psychoactive non-psilocybin that we're going to be um having a formula created for that with a really advanced protocol um from our, our guy ryan when does that one come out we're looking at a november launch for the uh for the oh. microdose yeah. Oh, so all, all this is happening pretty soon. Maybe pretty not all. Soon. Yeah? Okay. We've been we've been developing this stuff for a couple of years behind the scenes, and we're we're really dialing it in before it it comes to market. I want it to be perfect. Um, so there's a lot of testing going on in the background, but um, 
Yes, it is. There is a lot coming out in the next six months. Oh man, that's exciting. I, I will definitely be a customer. I want to try the microdosing. I've dabbled into microdosing, um, even to the point of just kind of making my own from, from, from mushrooms, right? Um, just trying it here and there. So I'm always a gamer. I always like to nice. try products and see, because I'm not a coffee guy. I think I told you that when I was just deciding on which product to try, uh, which always, I don't know why it shocks people. I guess more people than not are, are coffee drinkers or at least tea of some sort, but I've never been a caffeine individual. So for me, it's more about um, how can I maintain my energy like throughout the day without using these uh, like things like coffee or even like energy drinks, that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, I'm always uh, interested in dabbling into these new products that are coming out. Um, okay. So do you want to give yourself a plug? Like how can people uh, find you online? I'll put all this stuff in the description, but might as well share it. Yeah. Thanks, Jaren. I, I, I applaud you for that. You know, caffeine, um, especially in certain forms it, it is not the best, but it is a master plant and it, it does have a lot of capabilities, but a lot of, a lot of products out there are not, not the best form of caffeine for sure. And so I, I, I I agree with you there. I just want to tell you, like, any times you could do things naturally and, you know, completely sober is the best. You know, I, I completely agree. Yeah. It's, just, um, it's just like when I get to like more like this time of day, I guess. Um, I, I, I don't have crashes per se. Like a lot, a lot of my energy levels, I would say, are based on my sleep, right? So I don't have trouble sleeping so much or falling asleep. It's just like how much sleep I'm getting. It's interrupted sleep as a kid punching me in the face as a dog stepping on my gut. Like, it's just like, that's, that's the world that I live in right now. So I think that has the most effect uh, on my day to day, but I'm always trying to figure out, cause it's not like in the morning, that's my problem or even early afternoon. It's like, you know, as the day extends, I don't sure. be kind of flowing um, into the later afternoon. Totally. That's, you know, biohacking and, and these products. That's why I invented these products is to try to, help give people a little natural boost or an energy boost, but you know, whatever you feel comfortable with and maybe the microdose, I'll happily get you some samples of those. So you could try those and they're all natural as well. Everything in them is natural. So happy okay. to share those with you, Jer. And anybody interested could, you know, follow me on Instagram, Mr. Alex Wolf and e at Eons family is our, is our Eons and uh, at codes uh, by Eons is coming out in uh, October. So Look forward to that and we're we're constantly uh updating with new products and protocols so stay tuned okay yeah thanks so much alex for coming on it's been a great thank you learned some new stuff about you and got to catch up as well so uh very grateful about that and uh like i said i'll put all your information in the uh, description so people can find you uh it's mutual thanks joe this was a lot of fun man thanks for having me on yeah no problem thanks alex thanks chair